160,000. It's a loss. There was a decline in business, a decline in the property market, a decline uh, in jobs. Companies were retrenching more than they were accepting people into employment. It was a terrible situation. Can you imagine right at that moment in time you are a prophet of God and God tells you to go and tell them that that will continue for 70 years. That was not a popular message. But he was a man of God. Hallelujah. He was a man of God. And there arose another prophet right at the same time. Right in the same service. Who stood up and said to the people, what Jeremiah is saying is a lie. He actually was so majestic and he goes to Jeremiah, he takes the yoke, he breaks the yoke and he says to the people, as I have broken this yoke, the Lord has told me this yoke will be broken after two years. What a beautiful message. What a lovely message. Who do you think the people would have followed? Who do you think the people would have gone with? They would have gone with the one saying two years. Yeah, yeah. This one heard from God. Ah, that one is a weird one. <laughs> but we are so blessed today because we've got the benefit of hindsight. We know the other prophet was a liar. And we know that Jeremiah was telling the truth. After 70 years, the Lord appeared to Daniel and, uh, and the rest is history. The rest is history. So we have also to be careful with people that are coming on the pulpits to massage our ego and not to tell us the truth. Sometimes the truth will be painful, but let us still remain friends. Sometimes the truth will cause you to go out and pray and seek after God more. But let us still remain friends. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. You see, we live in days. We live during a period whereby we are told in the last days people it says in the last days, oh, Second uh, Timothy, Timothy, Second Timothy, uh, chapter number four. Second Timothy, chapter number four. Of course, it says the love of many uh, shall wax cold. Uh, but again, it says there is a time that the people will not endure sound doctrine. That's the one I'm looking for. Second Timothy. Chapter number four. Is it verse number three? Thank you very much. Are you there on your Bibles? Or you're looking at the one in front of us? Is it coming, my young man? Thank you very much. Verse number three. Verse number three. Let us read verse number three together. I'll read it for you. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. The time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lusts, Heap, they will heap unto themselves teachers. After their own mass, they will heap unto themselves teachers. We each year, having each year, having each year, these are the signs of the last days. People come to the house of God with itching ears. Tell me I'm blessed. Tell me I'm blessed. Tell me God loves me. Tell me God loves me. Yes, God loves you. Yes, you are blessed. We know all of that, but there is another way that needs to be done. Now the Lord tells me they will have itching ears. And they will not enjoy sound doctrine. You see, sound doctrine is doctrine that comes with a little bit of a challenge, a 
at the pain. You cannot endure something that is not painful. You cannot endure something that crosses your ego. You cannot endure something that is in line uh, with your expectations. Sometimes the word of God comes against your current. The current is going in a certain way and the word of God will come against your current. We have to endure sound doctrine. Hallelujah. Time will come. No, no, no. During the days of Jeremiah, they went with the wrong men. They followed the wrong men. They chased the wrong men. And it took them two years. They realized this man is a fluke. This man was lying to us. May God be glorified. May God be glorified. Just as it took 70 years for the people to see that Jeremiah was the true man of God. Let me take however long it takes for the true man of God to be manifested. Manifestations of the sons of God will happen. Glory to God. So, 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 so. So let it not be our time. Let it not be our time. Let this not happen in your watch. Let this not happen in your family. That people will fail to, 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 to endure some doctrine. See, sometimes the word of God needs patience. Sometimes the word of God needs application. For it to work, it needs application. I think it is uh, Mrs. Kumbo who mentioned here uh, that uh, uh, it, it is not like magic. It's not abracadabra, halakasu. No, 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 no. That's not it. The word of God needs application. It needs acceptance from your heart. Acceptance from your heart. That you've accepted him. I was studying, I was studying, I believe it's in the book of John, where Jesus says to the disciples, love me. And I will love you. And my father will love you. And we will manifest ourselves to you. Love me. And I will love you. And my father will love you. And we will manifest ourselves to you. Let's look for the scripture. I will find it for you. It's in the book of uh, John. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Says, if you love me, I will love you and will manifest, will manifest myself unto you. Believe it's, uh, it's in the book of uh, John. I will not try and find it here. No. Love me. Sometimes the word of God needs application. Needs you to love him. Needs you to love him. And when you have loved him, He's an intelligent God. He's an intelligent God. He can see you love him genuinely. And when you love him genuinely, he will manifest himself to you. It's got to be genuine. The things of God has got to be genuine. When you give your life to Christ, genuine, I've given my life to Christ. Not with a hidden agenda. Genuine. We have to be genuine when we're in the house of God. Love me, and I will love you. And I and my, and my father would love you, and we will manifest ourselves to you. I'm still looking for that time when Jesus will manifest himself to us. If you found it, shout it. It should be it. What does it say? The one I want 
want is love me, love me, and I will love you, and will manifest. I believe it's between John 14 and John 15 somewhere. Yeah, I saw John 14. John 14. Yeah. What does it say? He who is my commandment and give me and give me this. So it is he who loves me and, and me who Very good. Is John 14 verse 1? 21. Show it to us, please. That's the one. John 14 uh, from verse number 21. He that had my commandment and keepeth them. He that had my commandment and keepeth them. He it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my father. And I will love him and will manifest myself to him. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. God bless you. So we have to love God, keep his commandments, and he will manifest. Love God, keep his commandments, he will manifest in your situation. He will turn that poverty to success. He will turn that darkness into light. He will turn that death into life.
And as he was administering healing to that person who was blind, he says, can you see now? This guy says, I've had a touch, had a touch. I can feel a difference, but I cannot see clearly. I, I, I've had a difference. Something has happened to my eyes, but I cannot see clearly. And Jesus went on that miracle again and he says, how about now? How do you see? He says, later he says, now I see people as if they are trees. Still blurry. I can see people, I can see movement, but it's like they are trees. <laughs> Adam asked him, how do you know they are trees? Have you ever seen a tree? He was a blind man, isn't it? He's never seen a tree, but he said, people like trees. It's amazing the things of God sometimes. And then Jesus keeps working on that healing. After a while he says, how is it you see now? He says, now I see clearly. So even in the days of Jesus, we can see progressive healing. Amen. So let us keep praying. Any challenge that we have in the house of God, we want to tell you, it shall be well with the righteous. It is well with the righteous. It is well with the righteous. Let's keep trusting in God. Let's keep believing in God. Let's keep depending on His Word. And one day we shall celebrate. One day we shall celebrate. Do we still have time? Yes, I do think we have time. We, I made you open. I made you open Philippians chapter number 4. I made you open Philippians chapter number 4. Let's begin uh, reading from verse number 11. I want this to be my last scripture that I read today. The other thing I learned in that convention is sometimes preachers can tell lies. No? Preachers can tell lies. This man is blessing us. He's really standing in front of the congregation and blessing us. And he says, this is the last scripture. And he says, oh, before I sit down. Uh, and he says, before I finish, let me read this scripture. Man, you've got it. We've had three last scriptures. Oh, pastors, pastors, pastors. God bless us. Amen. God bless us. <laughs> verse number 11, are you in verse number 11? Yes. Are you there? Yes. Verse number 11. Can you still enjoy? Can you still enjoy this doctrine that we, we bring in? Because in the last days, people will not enjoy sound doctrine. Can you still enjoy? Is it alright? Is it well? Yes. Verse number 11. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned. I remember my wife receiving the offering, receiving the offering here. It says, not we are receiving the offering, not that we speak in respect of want, but I have learned in whatsoever state I am, wherewith to be content. I have learned. In whatever state I am, to be content. This was about the first service, uh, the first sermon that we received. It was godliness with contentment is great gain. Godliness with contentment is great gain. Let us not be people that wrestle with our God. Let us not be those that wrestle with our God. And say, God, change this situation, change it now. Change this situation, change it now. If you had a kid, like a kid in the supermarket, she's just gone on the candy aisle. And as she's on the candy aisle, she's not going to leave that aisle until it's got some candy. I feel sometimes we've got Christians like that who are not content with the situation they are in. They want God change it yesterday. Change it yesterday. Wait a minute. Wait there. Children, have you asked your mom why, why you are not allowed that candy? Take a minute and ask your mom why am I not allowed that candy? Then you will see that the explanation that you will receive is a very good explanation. 
Switch it around and let's come to children of God. Have you spoken to God? Have you asked God, why is this happening to me? Talk to God as your father. He is your father. Our father who art in heaven. Our daddy. Our dad. Dad. Why did you let this happen to me? Why am I in this poor situation? Why?
to be instructed is more like uh, people of a certain trend. People of a certain trend coming together, coming together like nurses coming together and they are instructed, they are given a call of instructions. How to handle challenging situations. You cannot as a nurse say, oh it's a challenging situation, this guy has gone so mad I have to run away. No, handle it, you have been instructed to handle both good situations and challenging situations. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. This is what instruction means. People of a certain uh, uh, profession being separated and taught their ways of their profession, instructions or given a code of conduct in that profession. This is what instruction in this verse here means. Verse number 13. Verse number 13. You see, we love verse number 13 as children of God. I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. Oh, I can do all things. Do you know where it came from? Have you read it in context? Read it in context. I can do all things. Yes, I can do all things. Because Jesus gives me the strength to go through that poverty and to go through that increase. To go through that lack. And as I abound, I can do all things regardless of the situation. Sometimes when God throws orange or lemons in our way, we say, God, we want oranges. Uh uh, squeeze it and make lemonade. You can do all things through Christ who gives you the strength. You can handle oranges and you can handle lemons. Verse number 13, I can do all things because Jesus Christ will give me the grace when I'm abased. He will give me the grace when I abound. He will give me the grace. Let me finish off. 14, notwithstanding, you have done well that you did give when I was afflicted, you have done very well that when I was afflicted, you did not ignore my affliction process. But when prayer was needed, you prayed. When giving was needed, you gave. When visitations were needed, you visited. He says, I give you thanks for that. Verse number 15. Now ye Philippians know 